Hi friends, my name is Tanvir Ajse and today in the second part of the module titled Modern Indian Sculptures, we'll talk about a few more sculptures of modern day India, their lives and their work and how it contributed as we talked about in the previous module in the making of modern Indian sculpture. As we discussed in length about the socio-historical, socio-political, socio-cultural and socio-economical backgrounds against which the artist of modern India set his work and his practice in order to create a modern vocabulary of his own which could be at one point representative of the modern Indian art at the same time would address the aesthetic concerns of art on the international level. Our next artist in the Rao is Meera Mukherjee from 1923 to 1998. She was inspired by the folk and tribal image making techniques and lost wax method of casting employed by Dhokras of West Bengal, Goras of Bastar and Malhars of Bihar. Now we saw that how subject matter or the subject of the art from the academic realism onwards started taking unusual turns in terms of going deep into the cultural or the daily life of India, particularly in relation with the rural in terms of, in the case of Ram Tinker Badge and also the arts practice that shaped up after India was liberated or during the course of British Empire's last leg in India it had a deep inclination towards the cultural introspection at one point we saw that the Bengal revivalism or the Bengal renaissance called for a revivalistic art movement which could bank upon the corpus of work that Indian civilization has produced over thousands of years. On the other hand, we saw Ravi Varma, previous to Bengal school of art, abiding by the Western academic style of painting and choosing to paint mythological subjects, particularly Hindu mythological subjects, in the Western style of painting, Western academic style of painting. The tradition continued further. It was replaced by the Bengal school. But at the same time, we saw that how JJ School of Art and other schools of art, which were established with a notion that the Western European academic model of painting and art could be imparted to the Indian artists and they could be taught how to paint, how to draw, how to sculpt, how to build, as per the Western technique. We saw in the previous modules also that with the decline of Mughal Empire and the other princely states which later came under the uh, influence of British Empire or which were governed directly by British Empire were instrumental in offering a new era of patronage of a different sort. Obviously, we discussed in the case of Ravi Varma and academic painting previously that how the patronage saw a completely different route. That the miniature painters, the traditional miniature painters and other artisans who couldn't find any patron 
in cities they previously had found moved to various other kingdoms smaller kingdoms princely states and continued their artistic practices but the cities like bombay kolkata the epicenters of british colonial rule they were various bombay and kolkata being one of the two of the prominent cities were instrumental in shaping up the new artistic era in the history of indian art which was soon to be destined to be called as the modern era of indian art now when people in relation to meera mukherjee's work were falling back on the traditional indian subjects for representation in the works of art they produced artists such as meera mukherjee fell back on the tribal image making techniques and lost vex method of casting these traditions of indian art particularly associated with folk and tribal arts in india have an unwritten history of thousands and thousands of years being a bengal school artist meera realized the need to search for indianness in her work when she was studying in munich during 1953 meera traveled widely in south india after she came back and in the himalaya to explore various crafts and metal casting traditions now this is what i was thinking to that how artists have started a different quest to look at what is within instant instead of borrowing the techniques of sculpting and painting from the europe some of the artists very consciously embarked upon finding new techniques methods of painting and casting to explore the traditional heritage of art making in india she wrote a book called Metal Craftsmen of India published in 1978 which kind which is an artistic testimony of her exploration which is an artistic testimony of her explorations in the field of traditional and folk techniques in the art making she formulated the figures in her sculptures by combining the rich textural quality and pattern making on the surface therefore her sculpture and its volume therefore her sculptures and their volume and three dimensionality are the result of methods and materials she found discovered and applied in her work she also worked on the themes derived from everyday life mythical figures and historical themes boatmen bowls cosmic dancer ashoka at kalinga a few such examples which took from the historical as well as the mythological corpus of the rich heritage of india and transformed them in her own way of art making now here is an artist who is not only deriving from what has happened in the past but in a way looking at it from the contemporary angle and trying to explore and bring back the traditions that have been considered and trying to explore and bring back the techniques and the methods that have been dispensed with almost and trying to explore and bring back to the mainstream artistic practices the techniques and the methods that have been dispensed with as archaic or have been confined to a particular community or community across india in her works the guru in her works the guru he who saw and the bayman avatar are few examples of her competency 
over the techniques. Her notable works on the theme of Bhopal gas tragedy and 1978 floods are examples for are examples of her ability to express such deep concerns of human life. In the southern part of India, Kanai Kunhirman, Janki Ram, Nandagopa, and Balan Nambia em emerged as important sculptors from 1960s and onwards. Kanai Kunhirman 1937, a Kerala-based artist who again got inspired by the traditional forms of Tayyam, a folk performing art, while studying in Madras School of Arts. Later he moved to London for future studies and then onwards started working on public sculptures with the help of state patronage after his return to Kerala around 1960s. Afterwards, he started working in the indigenous direction in copper, stone and cement. In the medium of cement concrete, he worked on his monumental geometric abstractions called environmental miniatures. The legacy of Dhanraj Bhagat was carried forward by P.V. Jankiram 1930 to 1995. A graduate of Government College of Arts and Crafts, Madras. He drew his inspiration from the temple sculpture and carving traditions of South India. Now again we see that how artists are falling back on the historical traditions and looking around and trying to derive inspirations and also to refine their methods and skills taking directly or indirectly from the traditional carvings in their surroundings. Jan Kiram chose to create sculptures as freestanding objects by using metal sheets. He also developed his style of embellishing surface of sculptures with the linear elements. His small scale metal sculptures are based on Hindu and sometimes Krishna icon. He presented his sculptures with the elaborate craftsmanship and mentality like deities or icons and, in after, and after 1960s he liberally used his workmanship to show the indigenous characteristics of his sculpture. By accepting iconographic description, Janaki Ram moved closer to the original images or icons which became his limitations too. A representation of Ganesha, Shakti, Krishna and Christ are such typical examples of some of his typical work in the 1970s. Another sculptor in line is C. Dakshinamurti, born in 1943 and trained at the Croydon School of Design. He achieved mastery over the human form and was compatible with the mediums like stone. He achieved mastery over the human form and was comfortable with the mediums like stone and clay. Lakshinamurti combined his childhood memories of playing with clay with the influence of European expressionist painting in his works. Another Madras school sculptor Nanda Gopal, who was born in 1946 in Karnataka, joined the Chola Mandalam artist village in 1966. After completion of his diploma in fine arts from Government College of Arts and Crafts Chennai in 1971, his sculptures acquired frontal quality and became almost two-dimensional picture-like surfaces. Like other Madras artists, he was also fascinated by the Indianness and the folk motifs such as animals, trees, images of deities, etc. Temple Gopurams in the pyramidal format 
village hero stones and a ritual symbolism also stimulated his art practice. The draftsmanship, variety of his textures and surfaces, welding, punching and colors are the important features of Nandagopal's sculptures. His welded copper and brass sculptures remained of rural and folk forms and gave contemporary essence at the same time. Another sculptor in the line is Ved Nair, born in 1933. His sculptures have distinct characteristics of moving out of the pedestal on which they are placed. When sculptures move out of the pedestal, architectural when sculptures move out of the pedestal, architecture such as courtyard or room or gallery provided the boundary. In Ved sculptural installations, everything surrounded by the sculpture of the space became important and contributed to his representation. His sculptural installations are grown from his creative concerns are, and are profound in every aspect. For instance, despair and hope of Kalpa Vikshas, the goddess and the man's offerings in plastics extra turn to be in strong turned to be strong statements on environment and human life. Nair explains that according to our mythology, the Kalpavriksha is a sacred heavenly tree which has ability to fulfill a human desire and it guides mankind to the enlightenment. Under the leadership of Shanku Chaudhary, which the artist whom we discussed previously, Baroda became an epicenter for the modern and contemporary sculpture since 1950s. He inspired many students and young sculptors such as Balbir Kat, Mahindra Pandya, Raghav Kanedia, Rajnikant Panchal, Nagri Patel, Ramesh Pateria, etc. Ramesh Pateria and many others. They all acquired individual styles on the lineage of Shanku Chaudhary. They all acquired their own individual styles of working. They all, they all acquired their own individual styles of work inspired deeply by their master Shanku Chaudhary. Mahindra Pandya, 1926-2015, a Baroda-based Gujarati artist, had unique ability to respond to the numerous surfaces. Pandya has created several constructions in terracotta and burnt or painted wood, which make the space more noticeable and well-defined in his sculptures. Experimental by nature, Pandya always got bored working with one material for longer periods of time and switched from one to another as stone, burnt wood, aluminium, terracotta, ceramics, fiberglass, acrylic sheets and so on. Further, he also worked in small and monumental scales. In short, Pandya's dialogue between him and his sculptures. In short, Pandya developed his attitude in short, Pandya developed his attitude towards different mediums and engaged himself in the constant dialogue between him and his sculptures. After Shanku Chaudhary, Pandya played a vital role as a pedagogue of sculpture department at MS University, Baroda. Raghav Kanaria was the young colleague of Mahindra Pandya in Department of Sculpture, MS University, Baroda. He also explored almost all materials like Pandya did. Kaneria's experiment, Kaneria's experimental tendency drove him to assemble and construct industrial or mechanical scrap along with the modeling and casting. 
Canadian went to Royal College of Art, London, on the Commonwealth Scholarship. His interaction with British sculptors like Brian Neal and Flip King during his stay in London took his work on the logic of formalism. Baroda-based Nagji Patel, another stalwart of modern and contemporary Indian sculpture, constantly developed formalist obsession with simple models. He devised his skills in polishing, caressing, and carving marble to create modern sensuality in his sculptures during 60s and 1970s. The abstract quality of eros and animal or insect forms reveals his interest in discovery of inspiring surface making on the stone. Stella Kramrich, art historian and specialist of Indian sculpture, considered Nagi Patel as one of the finest animal sculptors of the world. Nagi also engaged with monumental public sculptures in stone on the variety of forms and contents. Balbir Kat, born in 1939, was known for his monumental sculptures mostly in stone. His preoccupation with stone carving and fascination for the Indian tradition of rock and architecture made him an important figure in the modern movement of Baroda school. Balbi never sculpted in the traditional or lyrical way of carving, but handled monumental scale of stones inspired by Indian rock cut architecture. Handling such large blocks of stone required a lot of hard work for assembling them in the right combinations. Ram Kinkar and Henry Moon were his inspiration for the interest in freestanding open air sculptures. During the 1970s, Balbir engaged in the constant struggle with the stone in the process of chipping, gouging and slashing. His series of sun images were based on a focal hole which suggests the solar sphere with the circular moment around. Murinalini Mukherjee 1949 to 2015 worked in response to the vegetation and the flora that she loved. She gradually moved to the interchange of planes of biomorphic elements and plant forms. The similar principle of growth and evolution in nature is incorporated in her sculptural practice. She creatively used the technique of macrame in several ways. In her works, the knotted surface, she, in her works, the knotted surface set down the volume and mass with support of metallic rings to keep them in proper shape. Sometimes the elements of armature were devised to make freestanding sculptures on the basis of principle of growth in nature. Pieces of forms are not joined together but grew from each other. Dhru Mistri, born in 1957, revealed amazing creativity since he was a student in the faculty of fine arts in this university, Baroda. He was known for his perfect execution, imaginative qualities and anatomical excellence. Sometimes he, he disclosed his mysterious sense of animation in his works like seated man with a double right hand or depiction of women with four breasts. Misri also executed playful females, nudes with the cube showing the nude within the cube and other limbs combing out from various planes of the cube. One can observe an erotic element in his meticulously represented coat, butters. Inspired by Egyptian heads, he made a series of sculptures comprising heavily long-necked faces made in ceramics by leaving them with the natural cracks occurred during the process of firing. Inspired by South Asian and Indian art, Misty also sculpted composite images combining human, animal and bird with the finished contours. He also used the medium like the fiberglass to enhance the possibility of his sculptural practice and produced heads, busts and figures. Ravinder Reddy, 
began his sculptural practice with the elements studied from the nature in 1980. By the end of 80s, Reddy curiously connected the ancient Indian sculpture and contemporary experience, folk elements, and urban fascination. He made a study of biomorphic structures of seeds, plants, and insects, and began to discover the forms in sculptures. He used industrial resin and fiberglass to make large female figures coated with opaque paint. Large heads in terracotta and fiberglass directly address the viewer, but the sexual desire does not express the excitement but fulfillment. Thus, Reddy explores the expression of inner fullness through his works. He also developed his personal iconography of popular deities and depicted hairstyles usually folded and held down by band. Gradually, Reddy's female heads became gigantic in scale, highly decorative and meticulously painted to demonstrate the popular aesthetics. Madanlal, born in Madanlal, born in 1954 chose to work in stone and was fascinated with the concept of growth and plant life. His visit to Japan between 1985 and 1987 developed his imagery of growth. Madanlal's work also revolves around geometrical structures with different formations. Okay, his work Pragya created during India-Japan sculptors camp at Baroda in 1989 is 7 feet tall stands is 7 feet tall sandstone in shape like a pillar borrowed from indian temple architecture this shaft also looks like a linga having square base and octagonal middle portion above this octagonal section 16 sided top is carved is carved with sahastra lingas which means thousand lingas here the linear here the ling here the linga represented sexual energy with a firm ascetic discipline along with dru mistri madanlal and rabindran lady alex matthew walsan koleri pushpamala basant sharma sri jagdish and others also equally promising sculptors engaged in the practice of creating modern and contemporary sensibilities in the modern indian sculpture one can notice the development of sculpture from academic professionals to creative expressionists discussed in this module the thought process and the modern issues whether social political or humanistic or otherwise also contributed in the shift of materials and methods the works of above mentioned sculptors beckoned new directions and encouraged many young sculptors